Hello, and welcome to Becky's House of Sewing. I'm Becky, and this is my House of Sewing. I think that sounds silly every time I say it, but I enjoy saying it. <laughs> uh, it's also where we talk about all things thread and needle, mostly cross stitch and quilting, um, but you know, whatever else may come up along the way. Um, I have several things that I'm excited to share with you. One of them is right there. I got my bag done. Um, I showed this uh, yesterday, uh, yesterday, last time, um, and it didn't have the handles and it was super floppy. And now it's uh, full of stuff. I don't know if you can see. I've uh, been prepping for a quilt, that, a quilt class that I'm taking at the end of September, um, and I can't help but get started now. But I digress. Um, it is August 20th. I don't know how it got to be that date, but it is. Um, and it is almost nine o'clock at night, so I apologize for the lighting. Um, uh, but I definitely wanted to get, um, a, a video done tonight before I got in my gym jams. Um, or pajamas. Um, we got, we got gym jams. I think that came from a, um... The Dog House uh, is a British series where um, they uh, adopt dogs out, essentially. They match up dogs with uh, families, and I think they call them uh, Pajamas Jim Jams there. I think it's funny. Um, okay, so I have not one, one finish, but two finishes. So let me get started with that right away because it's gorgeous. Um, my love, my obsession this last two weeks has been Catherine Beringer. Um, this is Summer House Stitchery, I believe. Um, and it's a reproduction sampler from 1890. And it was so fun to stitch. Just look, just get, just get all up in there. Get all up in there. Do you see that F that's two different colors? Right there, right uh, on the third line. Isn't that cool? This is done on 40 count. Um, Fuller's Teaser, I think is the name of it, from Legacy Linens, and it's 40 count. I used all DMC conversion. Um, the real conversion was done in wool thread. And I just didn't want to bother. I just wanted to jump jump in and roll around in these beautiful colors. The other fun thing about this is that I saved all my all my leftover threads. Um, I, I don't know why. It just became a rat's nest. And I was like, I'm going to keep that. See how big it gets. Uh, so that was all the leftover threads from doing the low letters. Isn't she pretty? I'm so excited. Um, I haven't uh, personalized this or signed it. I usually don't do a reproduction sampler verbatim. I usually change my, uh, to put my name in it or my date or something like that. Um, I just wasn't inspired to do so. I think what I'm gonna, how I'm gonna finish this. Uh, fully finished. This is an F.O., a finished object, not a fully finished object. Um, I, I think I'm going to make it a flat fold and then um, I will be able to put my name and, and information and label it um, on the finished product. I think that's what I'm going to, I think that's what I've settled on. So, the other big exciting news kind of partners up with some things that I've purchased. So, um, let's talk about what I bought. <laughs> um, well, really, the, it's like, where do I start? Uh, the, the real thing was that I was watching Nicola Parkman a couple Sundays ago, and she was talking again about needles and the importance of having the right needle for the project. And specifically talking about like 46 count or higher, uh, 46, 56, that kind of thing, um, where you really need to use more of a beading needle because not only are the holes so small, but you're usually using a thin silk thread and that needs a different kind of needle. 
So, and I had learned that um, in the past when I was trying to do Mrs. Campbell. And uh, it was still, I got beading needles, but they were sharp and they were long. Um, and Nicola was talking about short ballpoint ones. And these are from John James. You can see I got them. And they're life changing. I said it, life changing. So I have been addicted to Mrs. Campbell again. Look. Oh, I have a thread here, sorry. Just hide that to the back. I even got her back on um, my uh, roller frame. So that's gonna be fun. You can get in there and see her. So if you recall, um, let's see if I can do this behind my head so I can see. So I had just gotten to the E uh, so I did all the letters. I moved the red line a little further back. I did that whole section on the side there that's incomplete um, and met the bottom, um, these borders here. I met those borders up as well. I've, I've made a couple counting mistakes, which is not hard to do on 46 count. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> but they're not horrible and they're not going to be super noticeable. I just wanted to kind of make sure that as I'm going, I'm meeting my border. So where I need to fudge, I, I'm not going too far before I need to back something up or fake something out kind of deal. And I'm sorry that I'm doing this so late at night. Ooh, sorry I just bumped the table because the colors aren't really showing. It, it's a little, the lighting's a little different, but look how pretty. I did a fairly decent job on my eyelets too. Try to keep that in focus. So all these large letters on the bottom are Algerian eyelets. So that's eight legs around to make a big hole in the middle. Let's see if I can get in there a little. You can really see it on the G's. So, um, I'm back in love, and I don't care who knows it. I'm excited. So, I was really finding that the sharp needles were actually poking me, <laughs> making it not enjoyable to stitch, and worried that I might bleed on something. Um, but also, the length of the needle really makes a difference. The eye of the needle is the same on both. Um, so a size 10 uh, works really well with the 103s and while I have this up um, so I did use the called for 103s I got it kitted up from the attic in Mesa Arizona and they shipped it over to me they substituted one of the dark greens it's now a 530 instead of the called for but I'm sure it's very close the fabric is the called for 46 count tabby cat linen, but I don't remember the name of the tabby cat linen. Um, and I finally love it. So hopefully I'll be able to get it done. Um, I keep forgetting to bring in the chart, so I apologize. I don't have a picture of it, um, but um, you may have already seen it around. I've seen several people stitch it. Uh, some in DMC, some in 103s. It's all beautiful. It's been a learning experience and I'm glad I'm back in love with it since it's almost September and I can work on it for a sampler, September, September sampler month. Um, which is, you know, just another fun thing that uh, to inspire us stitchers that somebody came up with that I'm grateful for. Um... So those are the two things I've really been stitching on uh, the last couple weeks. But I did want to talk about some plans because there's two things going on. Sampler September, but also the hashtag BAP, BAP to school, B-A-P, school to school, uh, which is short for Big Ass Project. Some say Big Awesome Projects, but um, yeah you know me. Well, maybe not all of you know me, but those who do get it. 
Um, so, wanted to review the other two things. Mrs. Campbell is no small feat, um, even though she's not a ginormous piece of fabric. 46 count is a lot of stitching. But I still have two um, larger projects, so I'd like to show you where I'm at with those and uh, uh, review a few of those whips. So I have um, a peacock, a unicorn, and a badger. That's what it's supposed to look like. It's a full coverage piece. The water on the bottom is um, satin stitches. Um, and I love stitching this. Love it, love it, love it. Because it is full coverage, um, I went ahead and just got a simple Zweigart vintage country mocha. That's where I'm at with it. I haven't really stitched on it in the last month because I got addicted to Catherine Berenger. Things happen. Um, but I do really love stitching it. So I look forward to that. And again, just for scale, this is a large piece. It will take most of this fabric up. And I think, yeah, this is a yard. I think it's like 28 inches or something like that. It was more than a, um, I think it was kind of a fat quarter size finished piece, but you need the margins in there. So you need at least two inches, two to three inches on either side. So that made you get a, a yard or a fat half, one of the two. Um, I am using the DMCs. Um, so these are the DMCs on my ring there. And I look forward to stitching it again. I'm gonna get this back in my bag here. Oh. Sorry. Hold please while I get things in the right place. I just don't want it to get connected to the vinyl because you're your printing can transfer, that's no fun. This is my bag that I made. It's like a 14 by 14 size bag with a cute little tab. I'm pretty sure that's Ruby Star. I can't remember the, I bought a, a ginormous bundle of fat quarters and I think it was Ruby Stars, I can't remember. This is another favorite bag. Um, I made this bag when I was first invited to an in-person cross-stitch group. Um, when I got invited, I was like, well, I have to make a bag so they know that I'm a serious stitcher. <laughs> have to have all the things. Now, this was, I want to see if I can find the date easily on this bad boy. Yeah, this is 2020, so pandemic time frame. Liz Matthews put this out. Her company is called Hello... Um, from Liz Matthews and she did this big reproduction and then what's inside here is all these little small motifs and charts that she made out of inspiration from this. Now this big chart here, um, like you can't see a lot of the stitching because it's faded because it's a reproduction. It makes sense. It's an old girl. Um, but I wanted if I was going to do all this stitching I wanted it to I wanted to see it so um I was so excited about joining this group when I brought this to work on to get started as a as a fun start and um realized when I got home I had started totally in the wrong place so I had to restart it um and now I was in a stitching group and so you don't get much stitching done because you're talking and getting to know each other. Um, but this is where I'm at. Ooh. This is where I'm at for this. And this is the Wood Smoke color by Lakeside Linens, the coveted Lakeside Linens. It's a 36 count, and I'm doing one over two. Um, and I'm using... I found this on the web. Ooh, sorry, Sierra, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> She found something on the web and just needed to tell me. Um, I'm using the DMCs. So pretty. So 
that is my project. And this also, I mean, this project is ginormous. This is, um, you know, this big. <laughs> She's a big one. I think she qualifies. So I think for the next couple months, I mean, I, I do feel like I enjoy stitching on these larger projects a little bit and then uh, moving to having something like a sampler snack that I can get get accomplished and get completed. Um, and I have several small things I'd like to do. So I might throw something small in between, but I think those are the three um, that I'll be working on mostly. Um, while I have it out, and here's another fun bag. Uh, this is my Liberty by Riley Blake. It's the quilting cottons, but isn't that a pretty pattern? I find that when I have a pretty fabric that I kind of just like to look at and don't want to cut, <laughs> um, I can make a bag out of it and admire it for a lot longer than cutting it up into small pieces. So um, one of my friends in my sewing group saw me talk about my whale um, and said, can you bring the whale, can you bring the whale to stitching and let me see in person. So that inspired me to get the top part done. So, oh, upside down. So this kit was um, created by Sean from the Rusty Crow. The Rusty Crow is a, um, a craft store in the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Uh, if you are a quilter, I recommend highly making a trip out to go visit because she sells fabric for $5 a yard, which is about $10 off normal pricing. Um, she also does a lot of uh, wool applique and different things like that. She sells a lot of her own um, patterns. She is a distributor. Sean is a distributor for Valdani in the U.S. So if you need the Valdani thread, which are these beautiful balls of thread, um, reach out to... Um, they have a, a really nice website as well uh, that's fun to shop on, but you know, because the Outer Banks is that's a little far. Uh, so, other things in my world is that I have been making some inventory of bags so that I could sell project bags because I really like making them. They're fairly easy. The, this one is an oddball size. Um, it's got a vinyl cover. I have another oddball size 12 by 12 square. And this is probably um, a 10 by 12 size. Yeah, 10 by 10 by 14 maybe. Um, and then I made four at the 12 by 14 sizes um, with the back being a different, it, they're all in the same group. They're all the same pat, um, in the, they're all out of this pattern group. Um, and then the insides, on this guy is yellow on the four of them so I um, I am going to attempt to continue to make some and then start selling them on Etsy or some other way I know a lot of people a lot of floss tubers that make bags sell them on Instagram or Facebook so I haven't quite figured all the ins and outs yet um, but I'm working on it so I, in that vein, I had bought some zipper tape and I bought a zipper jig to help me make zippers for it. And I got some more vinyl and I got some uh, cool things for Cricut to make like tags and whatnot. Um, I did, I think I'm going to um, also offer some uh, floss drops on two inch rings. Um, for a uh, little add-on things that also that I can make from my Cricut pretty easily and I like uh, the cardstock that I use and that kind of thing so 
that's kind of what's going on between finishing my bag and uh, getting prepped for the halo quilt, which I think I had, hold on, where's the halo quilt? Oh, here it is. I'm going to make one that, that one of my centers. It's not quilting cotton, but it'll be cute. Uh, this is the halo quilt. That This is the class I'm taking at the quilt patch in Stallings, North Carolina. Um, I believe the 23rd, 25th of September, sometime around there. And uh, so I'll get to learn this technique of scrappy quilt. And I've got lots of fun things. Um, in making this bag, I originally bought this color, um, but it was too spot on. I didn't like it. So what I think I'm going to do, and I've been playing around with this bag, um, I made this bag a long time ago um, and never quite finished it. And I think I'm going to use this strap with this bag and I may need to take it apart to fix it up a little bit too, but we'll see. But yeah, that's what's been going on. Um, you can see I bought some other supplies to make more bags. I use a double-sided foam uh, for the bat batting in the bag. I think it um, adds a little structure to the bag and it also kind of makes it softer for, you know, the needles and the, the accoutrement. I just like how they function better. So that's what I'm doing between making bags and getting ready for the quilt uh, class and cross-stitching my brains out because I'm excited again about Mrs. Campbell. Um, that, that's all she wrote, people. Um, I hope you guys have a great couple weeks. I'll check back in and um, let's, just, let's just keep stitching, shall we? Talk to you soon. Bye.